Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses as we continue with part 7 of the Order of Melchizedek, A Message to the Neophyte by Enoch Penn. The Creative Word, Chapter 6 A religion which is not understood by its votaries must always be more or less of a superstition, though the dividing line between a religion and a superstition is not always clear. It seems very clear, however, that always, as time passes, superstitions become injected and absorbed in a religion until the original teachings are largely hidden. The Christian religion is the outgrowth of the Hebrew religion or carrying to their true ultimates the fundamentals of that religion. And this whole system of belief and practice may be said to be based upon two facts or laws in nature. The first fact is that everything lives has inherently the power to become the equal of its progenitor. And it appears to have been a perception of this law that caused the writer of Genesis to state the purpose of the Creator in making man in the following words. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over all the earth. The Bible gives us to understand that man's life and development are without limit. This makes the statement we have just quoted from Genesis equivalent to saying, Let us make man who shall become gods in their realm, even as we are gods in our realm. And this thought brings us face to face with the thought that man's destiny is godhood. That man, not the individual, but the body of perfected ones, is to become the god of this mundane realm in according with the words of God to the Son. Unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. This thought was clearly expressed by the prophet in the words, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. That is, the earth is given into the hands of men, its inhabitants, even now, for them to make the conditions upon it largely what they will. This was further alluded to in the words of God to Israel. Behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruits or results of their thoughts. Men are permitted to think as they will, and it is the thoughts, emotions, and impulses of persons that qualify the vital and psychic atmospheres about them, forming their aura, and it is the collective thoughts and emotions of the race as a whole that determine the vital, mental, moral, and psychic condition of the world's vital atmosphere. God created all things, very good, but the minds and hearts of men have brought these things into a very evil state. The Bible is God's message to man, teaching him the purpose in his creation, the ultimate that he must reach someday, and that the paradise into which he will someday enter will be this earth, cleansed of the evil resulting of his own doing. The second fact upon which these religious systems are based is that every separate living thing is the result of a creative word. That is, every living thing is the embodiment of a thought of the creator. To illustrate this, take an acorn and ask, what is the creative word or thought of which this seed is the embodiment? We repeat, the acorn is a separate living thing and is the embodiment of a distinct thought of the creator. To know what is the thought embodiment in the acorn, we plant it and we find that the acorn becomes an oak tree and more, it becomes an oak tree bearing acorns. So we perceive the acorn is the embodiment of that thought. That thought determines its destiny for it can never become anything else but a manifestation of the thought that produced it. Whether the seed be that of a plant or whether it be the reproductive substance of an animal, it is the same. The creative thought that is in the reproductive substance that produced a thing is what it is able to become. In the case of man, we may ask, what is the creative word or thought in his seed showing what he can become? We find in the account given in Genesis the announcement of what it was determined man is to become, the ultimate towards what he is developing in the words, 
Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over all the earth. This, then, is the creative thought embodied in man's seed, declaring what he shall one day become when the creative word has finished its work in him. When John said of Jesus, the creative word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. His words implied that Jesus had become a full embodiment of that creative word, that he was a godlike man dominating all nature. His miracles proved he was a manifestation of what other men may become, and his words, follow me, implied you may become as I am, because Jesus was created in the image of God and had developed the character and gained of the knowledge and the powers of God. He was called a son of God. Since the creative word, with its urge to become, is in the seed, then that creative urge is lost if the seed is lost. If the seed is retained, that creative urge which causes all things to become according to it is retained. Then the man retaining it must, because of that urge within him, grow towards the ultimate determined for him at his creation. We find this thought clearly stated in the words, He that is born of God does not miss the mark, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot miss the mark, for he is born of God. Note the word translated, sin, in both the Greek and Hebrew, means to miss the mark, as one who shoots at a mark and misses it. In this fact that they do not lose their seed, the children of God are manifest. 1 John 3, 9 and 10 the mark set for man by the Creator is God-likeness of character, knowledge, and power. The beginnings of life in man are with the beginning, and if the children of God are manifested, discovered, in those who retain their seed, we perceive that the creative urge within the seed is the means, and the retaining of the seed in the body is the external and fundamental part of the method whereby one becomes a son of God. The retaining of the seed is the first step towards being born of God or of becoming a son of God. Therefore, when a man begins to retain his seed in his body, he begins the process of being begotten of God. And a definite step is taken in the process of becoming a son of God. All things that are, are by the power of the creative word which creative word is the power in a seed, causing the seed to become according to it. All things were made by it, by the word, or all things were thought into existence by the creator, for a word is the expression of a thought. Therefore, we say all things were thought into existence by the imagining power of the creative mind. And the process of gestation of a son of God is by adding month by month one urge after another, by receiving each lunar month a new creative urge, a new creative word. We read of this word that, to as many as receive it, to them it gives power to become sons of God. When Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Peter answered, Thou art the anointed Son of God. And Jesus then answered, Upon this rock I will build my church. His words implied that upon the foundation of divine sonship will his church be built, which is the same as saying that only they who become sons of God will be accepted as members of his church. The idea that for a man to lose his seed is an evil thing in itself was strongly hinted at throughout the ritualism of Israel. If a man had an uncleanliness which chanteth him by night, he must go out of the camp away from among God's people and wash himself and be unclean all that day. See Deuteronomy 23.10. Also a woman was rendered unclean for many days by her monthly flow. Paul offers his opinion that it is better not to marry, yet we have the words, marriage is honorable if the bed is undefiled. Of the younger widows, 
keeping idleness by church support. Paul says, when they wax wanting against Christ, they will marry. The idea being that they will prefer the pleasure of the gestation relation rather than to retain their seed with the hope of attaining a higher state of consciousness. For the soul grows and becomes conscious of spirit through retaining the seed. For the retained seed is the food of the soul. Since through retaining the seed, the material part of the spiritual gestation process is carried on, the one doing this grows towards the time of birth. But the words of Jesus to Nicodemus, Ye must be born of water and of the Spirit, show that there is another factor to be considered. Baptism by water typifies the washing with the water of life by the word. Ephesians verse 26. That is, the life that is in the seed, qualified by the creative word, washes away sin. Baptism, being the initiation into the church, symbolizes that the initiate will seek to retain his seed so that the creative word given him month by month may give to him the life which will wash away his sin. By so retaining the word, in time the faculties of the soul begin to awake and the physical man born of a woman living in this material world is being born again as a soul separate and distinct from the physical body with its five senses and having a separate set of senses of its own by which it can see and hear and know in the psychic realm the soul world this awakening to a soul consciousness is being born of water the water of life that is in the retained seed if the attitude of devotion towards God, a reaching out to come in touch with the Holy Spirit, is maintained, in time the soul will see a light, dimly at first, but that light will increase. Of this light Jesus said, the world cannot receive it because they cannot see it. Not until the eyes of the soul can see the light of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, can one receive it, to be affected by it, or to affect it. In time, the soul finds itself in that light and then realizes that it is now a spirit born of and living in the light of the Spirit of God, living among the holy ones who constitute the order of Melchizedek. The experiences of many show that as the seed is retained in the body, the body grows more and more sensitive and the person begins to sense and to know things impossible for one whose body is impoverished of its vitality through the loss of the seed. Because they who lose their seed cannot sense spirit, it was written. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, because he is utterly unable to be conscious of them. If the neophyte is watchful of his sensations, he will begin to notice the effects of the feelings of others upon the general vital atmosphere about him, and may note as well the influences from the realm of the souls. With some persons, the soul faculties soon begin to awake and the neophyte has the opportunity to learn many things about the unseen world, things impossible for the normal person to know. As the soul begins to see and hear and feel, and therefore to know, in the soul world, he has already some life of his own, though he is not yet born. The normal person who has not yet begun to practice the regeneration has no life of his own. He is kept alive and conscious by the play of extraneous forces impinging upon him. Without the action of these extraneous forces, most persons would soon go to sleep. This was illustrated when, on the Mount of Transfiguration, the disciples went to sleep. For the three great minds of Jesus, Moses, and Elijah had in them nothing in common with the mentality of the disciples. Also, when the angel talked to Daniel, he found himself on his hands and knees asleep. The realm of souls is not, properly speaking, the spirit world, but is called the astral, and it stands between the carnal consciousness and the spirit world. This is why the neophyte becomes conscious first of the things of the astral, or soul world, 
and afterwards become conscious of things in the spirit world. The reason it is so hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven is because his riches require so much of his attention, and this holds him in the world influence from which, above everything else, he is seeking to escape. There is a law which an observant person can easily verify. It is that one comes in touch with the spirit of whatever is thought about. In other words, one comes in touch with the spirit of whatever the attention is fixed upon. For this reason, if a man turns his attention towards God and the heavenly world, if he is retaining his seed, in time he comes in conscious touch with that realm and with those who dwell therein, conscious of the angels of God and of the spirits of just men made perfect who had passed on into that realm as he becomes conscious of God the father and of his elder brethren in heaven the attaining of that consciousness constitutes being born of the spirit therefore he who would become conscious of that realm where God and the angels of God are must fix his attention there Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In other words, your attention will be fixed upon those things which are most desirable to you. And for this reason, also, it is written, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. We would say right here that such teachings as these are not intended for all men, are not intended for those whose loves and sympathies are holy for this material world and generation, but they are intended for those who are dissatisfied with a life and consciousness wholly of the physical senses, with its selfishness, its injustices, and its sufferings, and who have the maturity of mind to desire and the strength of will to live a holy right life. There are many who desire to live among others who are true and honest and just and kind, but who are not able to live up to that standard. One should not ask of others that which one is unable to give in return. They who would enter the spirit world where peace, truth, and perfect righteousness with kindness are the laws must pass through a long and severe training to develop these characteristics in himself before he can properly be received among such as a fellow. Hence the many years of preparation required of the neophyte. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much. The idea being that they will prefer the pleasure of 